more motivators going hard these days on fixing the tummy. So I'm trying something with bone broth in the morning, you can electrolyte powder with L-glutamine, and then strawberries, spinach, uh, collagen powder, and almond butter. And a diet for the rest of the day, really specific to fix the gut. Also, I'm really pulling off the creepy morning vibe right now. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my late 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following 10 years, I lost 65 pounds racing triathlons, running races, cycling events, and world championships. But eventually, the suffer culture of endurance sports training caught up to me causing health issues and injuries. Now, my company Motive and I are on a mission to help people live more fulfilling lives by reaching endurance sports goals using healthy methods. We can all kill it on race day without killing our bodies. Let's do it. So over the last few years, all signs with me point to having leaky gut, AKA intestinal permeability. It is a very, very hard thing to test and diagnose with tests. So it tends to be diagnosed clinically with symptoms. Now going back in my history, the entire time I was growing up, pretty much all we ate was processed foods, which is a big, contributor to getting intestinal permeability. Then in my 20s, I drank like a fish, again, contributing to intestinal permeability. And then when you look at, I'll put a couple of um, studies up that you can go and look at. One of the big things that they say can lead to intestinal permeability is extreme endurance exercise. Lots of time spent over 70% of your VO2 max. Now. The symptoms that I've got are basically all of the things that you would expect. So unexplained weight gain despite exercise, got it. Depressive episodes, got it. Skin irritations, I don't know if you've been able to see, but like redness under my eyebrows and in my beard, got it. Issues with digestion, things that go on, on the throne, got it. So all signs point to leaky gut for me. Oh, almost. So leaky gut, intestinal permeability. There's a membrane on the inside of your stomach that keeps food particles from getting, like passing the barrier between your stomach and your body. You actually don't want all those food particles coming into your body because it creates a lot of inflammation which then cascades into a lot of health issues, creates an immune response that your body really isn't supposed to be doing. So there's just this constant immune response and it gradually builds up and builds up and builds up. Fortunately, you can fix it with some lifestyle change and a diet. Right now we're in a diet and lifestyle change kind of phase. I'll fill you in right after a cold plunge. It's part of lifestyle. So that was four and a half minutes and I want to say it was probably about six or seven degrees Celsius, somewhere around 44 degrees Fahrenheit in there. I try to do that three times a week for a total of 12 minutes throughout the week. And the idea, like a big part of the benefit from cold exposure comes not because it's not stressful, it is very stressful. I never want to do it. It's because it teaches your body how to handle stress better. And that's sort of the whole premise of the protocol that we're doing to help with the leaky gut. It's to eh, minimize, reduce, take a break from some of the stress. Okay, I'm toasty again. In here for a wee little strength session. So generally what I'm trying to do for about 30 days is reduce the stress to the stomach. Few big things are like drinking coffee, there's a lot of known allergens even with healthy things like even eggs or natural cheese. 
basically take out a lot of the things that can really, really exacerbate problems with the stomach when a stomach is inflamed. One of the big things is intense endurance exercise. So for about 30 days, my exercise is gonna be light strength training and some walks and some bikes and like really, really light exercise. The reason that endurance exercise is so tough on the gut is because as much as 80% of the blood flow to your stomach ends up getting shunted to your limbs to allow you to swim, bike, or run. So for people that have a background like I do of eating piles of processed food as a kid, drinking a ton in my 20s, having tons of fast food from like 17 to 23, and then doing a pile of endurance exercise, all signs and roads lead to intestinal permeability. So we're gonna try about 30 days of just chilling out with that. Now, a lot of people might be saying like, does Taryn even train anymore? Well, here, let me show you something really cool. Also, look at the new signage in the office here. So yeah, I've still been training really regularly, but it's less about getting ready for a race and more about just staying fit and sharp. And the sharpness has kind of stuck. Look at this. This is a run that I did with a 5K time trial in it. And you can see laps four, five, six, seven, eight, come to a 1943 5K. I'm also doing this at probably about 175 pounds. So when you normalize that 1943 to back when I was racing a ton kind of weight at 155 to 160 pounds, it's like a 1910 5K, which is some of the fastest running that I've ever done, all while not training more than about seven to nine hours a week. After I do this strength workout, I'm gonna show you the training plan that I use that we use for the base miles and the base training for our athletes in the mode of training app. So this is our motive training app. You can go and check it out at mymotive.com. You can try it for free for 14 days. But in it, if I was to set up my plan in this, how it would look is I would go to my baseline training and right now I would set it up to duathlon because I'm not swimming because pools are tough to get into. And this is basically what my plan looks like. So I actually, I do like one session every single day and it's a strength session on Monday, on a Wednesday, and then I do an intense ride or run Thursday and Tuesday, they alternate. And I do yoga every single morning for about 15 minutes. So on Friday, I actually add a strength session. This is basically it. These strength sessions are making sure that my body can handle any sort of training. These weekend sessions of a main bike and a main run on the weekend are low intensity to get that mitochondrial density with the zone two, that nice low intensity that keeps all of your stress hormones low. And then what I'm doing in these intense sessions is what's allowing me to still go out and do those sharp efforts of the 5K repeats and still do it fairly well. Because in a lot of cases, what I'm doing in these intense efforts that a lot of coaching groups don't do is anywhere from 15 to 60 second really fast intervals. So many coaching groups don't do that because those fast intervals aren't associated with VO2 max. And VO2 max is like, the holy grail in the endurance community's mind of what is going to determine your performance. But these short interval sections of like 15 to 60 seconds, they've actually been shown to reduce body fat and improve body composition more than those longer VO2 max intervals of two to six minutes. They also have been shown to keep your VO2 max nice and high and they keep your neuromuscular power. So more muscle groups are able to fire. There's a stronger connection and a quicker firing between the brain and the muscles. They also allow you to have a big amount of rest because typically these short intervals are done as like 30 seconds on, two to four minutes off, as opposed to four minutes on, one minute off. So you're just spending less time at that super high heart rate. So 
in my experience, it's less degradating on the body. This is the training that we have in our app for year round. When people aren't in a specific training plan, this is what they do. It keeps them really, really sharp without spending a ton of time at high heart rates. Their top end is really good. Hopefully their body composition is being really well maintained. So this creates a really well-structured training plan that you can be like me, we're training fairly minimally and still putting out good performances. Then when you wanna add a race plan in, you sharpen up really quickly and then all good. When I started thinking about what we we're going to implement with our app that was going to allow athletes to get as good a performance as possible in as little time as possible with as little risk as possible to long-term health consequences, I kept coming to when an athlete is not in a training plan, do a lot of strength training, do a lot of low intensity training, make the intense training very short with long periods of rest. And this is going to be the best balance so that when people want to sharpen up for a race, they're not already tired and their training time has been really balanced. So mentally they're like, all right, let's get into this training plan as opposed to slogging through things like 50 weeks a year and then just having like a two week make believe off season. This scenario is what I find does really well for our athletes. So if you wanna check out the Motive Training app, there's a link in the description below. That's what I'm doing. It's keeping me nice and sharp. And our athletes say that they are training better and performing better than they ever have while feeling better and actually putting in less hours. So link in the description below, that's what's up. And as I've been saying for the last few weeks, if you have any questions about the Motive Training app, why I've started sharing more about how we've built it and why we've built it that way is I want this to be more of a two-way street. I wanna let you in on the progress of the company. If you have any questions about it, even before you sign up, or you've signed up and you're not sure how to use it, just DM me on Instagram. Um, what I'm doing with a lot of people is actually um, spending 15 minutes with them to make sure that their training questions are all answered, that their questions about the app are all answered, setting you up for success, not just with our app, but with training. So DM me on Instagram if you have any questions and um, I'm gonna go have a little tasty, nutritious, fairly plain, stomach nourishing breakfast now. Later motivators.